Mark and I took a day trip to Sanchong First Military Kindred Village. During World War II, this location had been a Japanese anti-aircraft gun position, guarding the strategically vital docks that lined the Danshui River. After their retreat, the KMT built 59 homes here to house a couple of hundred military refugees fleeing the civil war on the Chinese mainland. Today, the location has been preserved and open to the public, giving people a small sense of what life was like for those who fled, missing both their homeland and family who could not make the retreat. What was meant to be a temporary bivouac was extended to a life lived in exile. So let's talk about the villages. Like, when did they start? 1949, Chiang Kai-shek, and his army fled. And they brought with them just under 2 million refugees. That's a lot of folks. Mostly military families, and uh, they needed somewhere to live, right? And so they settled in villages like this. They established military villages like this. There, I think overall there are over 800 of these villages throughout All over Taiwan. the island, right? Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day. And are they, are they all built, like you can see how this one was kind of built almost like a fortification, this right? This one like, is special. This one had, I think, a few anti-aircraft guns Okay. around the village and some tunnels that had been left over from the Japanese occupation of Taiwan. Okay, so, so there is an infrastructure here already in place uh, before Chiang Kai-shek and his military arrived. Okay, this wasn't yeah. meant to be permanent. Yes. They were supposed to take back the mainland. Yeah, they were. Right? That's, that's One year it says to prepare, on the wall. Yeah. two years to attack, three years to eradicate the communist threat, and then... five years to succeed. What about year four? They skipped year four. <laughs> <laughs> it's an unlucky that. number, right? I, uh, maybe that's it. That's it. They you do, you do just four. you just rest for year because four. four just in and Chinese sounds like the word to die. All right, let's uh, let's start walking around. Let's have a look. Let's check and it see out. what we can see. All right. Okay. We're standing right. in front of these mirrors, and they're all scratched out. Ooh. And uh, I figure they're old mirrors. Yeah, I thought like someone very specifically had, you know, rubbed like a truck along them or something, you know, exactly. scratching them out. But I'm hearing that there's a story behind that. Yeah. <laughs> What's the story? From the United States, in 1945, the government of the United 已经没有办法回去了，所以我们的艺术家就做了几个反光镜在这里，然后他们就反光镜可以看到自己，然后中国大陆的图就在上面，他们图像把自己的影像射到上面去，就是自己好像回到中国大陆家乡。哇，真的
our special grade or where we are right now. For the people living here, was there a feeling of being like above the general Taiwanese society or above the law in some regards? Well, yeah, I mean, there was that because the military and Chiang Kai-shek ruled over, you know, there was a very, it was under martial law, basically. So it wasn't the Taiwan that we know today, right? Yeah, very different. So, uh, yeah, there was that sort of feeling of a bit of superiority, if you will. Mm -hmm. So where are we now? What's We're this at the, the entryway to the, the village chief's home, the village yeah. chieftain. He was doing very well. I mean, this yeah. is a pretty... He must have been a very high-ranking fellow, right? To have your own uh, front courtyard. He had oh, a, and so if there's... you had a television back in the day, you right. were doing very well. Doing very well. That's too, so. a luxury. Not just TV. He has the, he has the record player record as well. Record player. He's got a lot. Well, a the, lot. The VHS. <laughs> recorder. Recorder. Maybe like, that came a little later. You know, we have the man himself, yeah. uh, Chiang Kai-shek. A bust of Chiang Kai-shek. And I think around this time, the uh, KMT were really trying to make uh, an icon. Out of out of the leadership, out of Chiang Kai-shek for sure, and the for struggle, sure. right? And you know, he was, uh, you know, the the generalissimo. The park in Taipei, where you'll see hundreds of yeah. statues like that of Chiang Kai-shek, oh, wow. uh, just filled, you know, filling the entire park. That must be a freaky it's, place to go. It's pretty. Freaky. So here's where uh, the feasts. The feasts would be prepared would in a be kitchen prepared. like this, and this would be a huge kitchen. Yeah, for the day, right? For like back you, in the day, this kitchen would have been huge. Got your hob, your sink. My mother-in-law would come into a kitchen, maybe a third of this size, mm -hmm. and prepare a whole table full of food for us during like Chinese New Year. Yeah. And you know, it was miraculous. I don't know how she got all that food out of such a small kitchen <laughs> by herself. With the food, it's one way that um, as the wait got longer and longer, mm -hmm. for when was this battle for liberation on the mainland going to come yeah uh the people living in these communities started to melt into the greater taiwanese population right and with that they kind of added their culture right and added their flavor of yeah. of, of food and, and right. music and, and other aspects to taiwan as a whole this one should be open over here this house okay, Give it a go. this is the story house the story house right. okay it's a play on words, it's a pun. Oh, okay. But basically, kill do and pluck out Mao. Pluck out Mao. And, <laughs> and then fight the communist. Fight the communist. And resist the uh, Russian. Resist the Russians. They yeah. get a mention too. They get a mention. Oh, nice. They get a mention, yeah. You can see, yeah, we have some flour. Yeah. And I heard that actually this was when flour was really first Mm -hmm. first introduced to kind of uh, Chinese cooking and to uh, yeah. uh, Asian food, really, right? They got the flour from... From the U.S. From the U.S. Uh, as food aid, right? And they had to they had to give stamps to collect bags of flour. They right. would line up for, for in the morning to go and collect it or whatever. And later on, you had these sort of... Uh, you still had rationing or like these special stores where the uh, military and the civil servants could take their tickets mm -hmm. and go to these special stores to get rations of flour and alcohol and cigarettes and all that other stuff. Yeah. I remember going there once. What size this is? Oh, well. This must have been a typical uh, military grid, size 40. Yeah, I like it. It would have been a big, like, uh, GI. They wouldn't put me in an airplane. They'd have me on ground crew. Oh, yeah, you'd be too heavy, be right? Too heavy, yeah. You'd be too heavy. I'd probably be too heavy these days as well. Let's go see what's in here. I think this might be the last house for today. Mm. Uh, general, this is a general's houses, yeah. Oh, this would have been one of the general's yeah, houses. you gotta okay. have some high rank to be in. There are lots of awesome photos on the wall. Right. Oh, yeah. look. Oh, yeah. This look at him a... next to his plane here. I mean, this is like a... Uh, if I had this kind of place in like in Brooklyn, yeah. New York, man. I mean, look at this. A big kitchen with a dining area. 
Oh, now this is... You ever watch HDTV, you know, where they're going through the old houses and they say, yeah, I would knock that wall out and make I this take kitchen this out. bigger. Yeah, yeah. Have an open concept kitchen. That's exactly what I would do here. <laughs> you know? You got a yeah. call to make? And on, the, on all the phones, they would tell you, like, you know, uh, be careful of the communist bandits. Calling? Yeah. Oh, really? Don't, don't discuss any military secrets on this <sighs> phone. That's what it says yeah. right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to have a constant reminder. You know, just in case one day you wake up and you forget. Yes. And you're like, yeah. oh, I better go. And you know, you're about to make a call to reveal some state secrets. And, and, you, and you go, that. oh, wait a second. Yeah. No, I'm don't do that. not supposed to reveal state secrets on the phone. Yeah, yeah. No military, Silly. No military secret discussion on this phone. <laughs> With the communist yeah. bandit. And now we have a singer. We got the singer over here. I knew he'd make an appearance. He started uh, the American stuff bombing and then started selling things. Started selling stuff, right? Car carpet bombed them with the American appliances oh. instead of bombs. Big mirror for, for herself to get ready for the evening. And I bet you that's a mahjong set. You reckon so? Yeah. Let's have a look. The big reveal. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh man, it's a nice one though, isn't it? It's a nice it? antique set. You can tell it's old. I like the smaller tiles. Small tiles are easier to handle. Yeah. I, I, you I put them on I, I do every once a year and I yeah. get made look a fool. Okay. Coming into this uh, basically a network of tunnels that was in place so they can move the ammunition from one place to another. There used to be six anti aircraft guns around this village. Uh -huh. And so this tunnel, this network of tunnels is what's left of, of that. Uh, so this was when it was Japanese, not when yeah. it was... This is a, basically ROC. one of 10 entrances. So actually, this would have been used during the 1945 bombing of Taipei, I guess. Right? Yeah, exactly. This, uh, this bunker saw he, some action. It saw some action where the U.S. warplanes were overhead. Bombing the Japanese. How's your back there, Merck? <laughs> My back is not doing so well. <laughs> oh, we're back. Emerging. It's the tool. You're correcting there, Chinese. This is, this is not, this is a, it's a play on words. Oh, it's a pun. It's a pun. Can you explain the pun to Ting Budong Ren? Tu? This tu shu wan means a library or bookstore. Okay. But this tu means to like uh, to travel, to go, to move. It's movement. It's not the tu, which means map. Ni hao. Ni hao, 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 
there aren't many of these villages left. There used to be, uh, what, over 800? What was the number you gave me? 862. Ba Balio. Ba Balio, 886. 886. And we're down uh, to a couple of dozen. Yeah, so um, pretty rare. Uh, yeah, do it. You know? Yeah, this one's right in your backyard too. You know, it's just right. a short walk from, uh, yeah. What's the MRT station here? Taipei Bridge? No? Must be. Must be. We'll, we'll fix it in post yeah. uh, if I've said the wrong one. Uh, we'll have a map down in the description. Right. Come check it out. Right. And I've been Paul. I've been Mark. And I'm still Mark. And you're fantastic. And that's Tiger behind the lens. <laughs> yeah. Wave, Tiger. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked it, hit subscribe. We'll catch you next time. Remember, all great YouTube posts have a signature sign off. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> Are you going to remind them of that every time? <laughs> well, you know. Is that our sign off? That's the sign off. Okay, okay. That's the sign off. That's the sign off. <laughs>